All right, welcome back, Math 12s. Today we're going to move on to section 1.3, combining transformations. We're going to focus on two things today. We're going to look at applying translations, reflections, and stretches to sketch the graph of a function, putting it all together. And we're going to look at how we come up with the equation of a function that's been transformed by translations, reflections, and stretches. So let's start with this example one. In example one, we're looking at um, this function here, uh, y equals f of x, that comes up and follows this blue curve. We want to apply this transformation. We're going to do 3f of 2x. Now, as we know, the 3 represents a, an a value, and a values affect vertical stretches. You could stretch it to make it taller or shorter, a, a compression effectively. So 3, a equals 3, is a vertical expansion. And 2, a b value of 2, is a horizontal compression. It's going to actually make it smaller by a factor of 1 over 2. All right, so we're going to use that information to uh, sketch our graph. We know that when we combine transformations, we use a little trick here called street. This helps us keep in mind the order in which we need to apply the transformations. So the first thing we need to do are the stretches. So the horizontal and vertical stretches or compressions. Then we look at the reflections. And then we look at the easy translations. So I've sketched this out again just to help us uh, see what things are going to look like on a slightly bigger graph. Now the a value of 3 means there's going to be a vertical expansion. So every key point is going to go three times as far away from the x-axis as it currently is. So if I do this in purple, this point here at 1, 1 is going to stay the same x-coordinate, but instead of being up 1, it's going to be up three times as high. This next point, which is at 4, 2, instead of being at a height of 2, is going to be at a height three times as high. It's actually going to take me off my graph here. It'll be about there. This other point is going to be quite a bit higher. I'm not even going to bother graphing it. So I'm going to have this intermediate point here that's going to keep going up. Then a b value of 2 is going to cause a horizontal compression. So all of my points are going to come in to half the distance from the y-axis that they currently were. So if this is at a distance of 1, it's going to come into a half. And if this is at a distance of 4, it's going to come into 2. So I'm going to end up with quite a tall, steep graph that's very close to the y-axis. If I map the point, any point x, y in the graph is going to be affected by this 3 and this 1 half. So since the 3 is affecting the output, it's affecting the y value. Any point is going to get mapped to a point with a coordinate of 3 times whatever the y coordinate was. And every x coordinate is going to get mapped to an, an x coordinate that's half the size as it was. So if I had a point at 1, 1, it should end up at 0 0.5, 3. And in fact, that one is right there at 0 0.5, 3. If I had a point, point at 4, 2, it should get mapped to a point that's half as big for the x-coordinate, 2, three times as big for the y-coordinate, 6. So I should have a point at 2, comma, 6, which is right here. So it works out perfectly. Now the second graph, let's just make sure this is running here. There we go. Now the second graph is uh, a combination of a horizontal compression and a horizontal translation. But we need to sort of break it down a little bit to help us figure out what that's going to look like. I think I can probably make this uh, happen on a uh, on a better graph. So I'm just going to sketch that out again. 
So I've redrawn the graph here. I stretched it out a little bit. I haven't actually changed anything. I've just changed the x, uh, how the graph works. I've just stretched out the x-axis. Okay, so we know we're going to have a horizontal compression. Okay, it's going to get stretched or uh, stretched by a factor of one third, which is actually going to make it horizontally smaller. And then we're going to shift left. But how much are we going to shift left? So remember that anytime we're working with a b value in here inside the function, we have to factor it out of both of these terms. So let's just clean this up here. So that's going to end up looking like f of 3 times x plus 2. We've taken 3 out as a common factor from 3x and from 6. Close my second bracket there. That means there's going to be a horizontal stretch by 1 over b, or 1 third, and a horizontal shift, translation, uh, to the left or the right. Hopefully you're clear that it's moving towards the left. And remember, we do that in the order of street. So we do stretches first, then we'll do reflections, and then easy translations. So first off, a horizontal stretch by 1 third. Each point is coming in to a third of what it was. So if this is out 1, it's going to be in at 1 third. If this is out 4, now it's going to come in to 4 thirds, which is just slightly more than 1. It's 1 and a third. And if this is out at 9, it's going to go into 9 thirds, or 9 divided by 3 is 3. So there's my graph for the horizontal stretch by a factor of a third. And then it's shifted back to, so back one, back two. So now my point, let's do this in green, my key points, maybe one like this, one like that, and one here, are going to get shifted back two spots. So one, this is going to go back to one and here. And this one, which is a 3, is going to go back 2 to 1. And I get my new graph there. That's it. So that's graphing a function with a combination of a few different transformations. It's nice sometimes to break it down into individual pieces, but mapping works as well. And I'll lay that out next. So for any given point on the function uh, f of x, any given point x comma y, a horizontal stretch by a factor of one third is going to affect the x coordinate. So that's going to give us one third of x comma y. So we've dealt with that. There are no other stretches, there are no other reflections, so then we can go to the easy translation. And this x plus two here tells me that I'm going to move the graph back two. I'm going to move it to the left two which means whatever my x-coordinate is, I'm going to subtract 2 from that. So I'll get 1 third x minus 2 comma y. If you look at the y value here, that bears out in what we've seen. Our y coordinates haven't actually changed. And here, I've taken what a x-coordinate that was 9. I took a third of it, which is and then I subtracted 2, which gave me 1. Excellent. This point here at 4, a third of that would be 4 thirds. Minus 2, which is like saying minus 6 thirds, would give me negative 2 thirds, right over here. So that bears out. And this point at 0, a third of 0 is still 0. And if I subtract 2 from that, I get negative 2. So that works out as well. So using a, a mapping tool, I can take an original function and move it without actually having to graph any intermediate steps. It's magic. All right. For example two, we're going to show the combination of transformations that should be applied to the graph of the function f of x equals x squared in order to obtain the graph of the transformed function g of x equal to negative one-half f of two times x minus four plus one. Then we'll write the corresponding equation for g of x using the x squared part. 
Okay, so this shows the transformation. This shows what happened to f of x. And then when we write g of x, we'll have uh, g of x is equal to negative 1 half, etc. Okay, so let's take a look at that. What I like to do in a situation like this is identify what my a, b, c, and d values are, or in the case of this textbook anyways, what your h and k values are. It means the same thing. The a value affects vertical stretches and reflections over the x-axis. So for a equals negative 1 half, we have a vertical stretch by 1 half and a reflection in the x-axis. For the b value of 2, we've got a horizontal stretch also 1 half because remember that our horizontal stretches are 1 over b. So in this case if b is 2 it's going to be a horizontal stretch also by 1 half. It's a positive so there's no reflection. Our h value is 4 which means we're moving to the right 4 and our k value is positive 1 which means we're moving up 1. So if we start with y equals x squared, we can apply each of these transformations in the order of street and create our transformed function. So if a is 1 half, we've got a vertical stretch by half. That means this is going to become y is equal to negative 1 half x squared. Our horizontal stretch, we've already got this negative 1 half going. Our horizontal stretch is going to be caused by a b value inside the function. If there's a horizontal translation, that goes inside the function as well, but we need to be careful about that and write it like this. Negative 1 half, 2 bracket, x minus 4 close both brackets and square it. And then we've got a vertical translation, a k value of 1, so we get y is equal to negative 1 half, 2, x minus 4, all squared, plus 1. That's our function. So when they say write the corresponding equation for g of x, I could do the same thing here and just go g of x is equal to negative 1 half 2x minus 4 squared and plus 1. 